Good morning and welcome to the Caregiver Teleconnection. My name is Glenda Rogers and I'm going to be your facilitator for today's session. We have Lucy Berlick with us today and she's going to be talking about high hygiene challenges for persons with dementia. And before Lucy gets started, let me tell you just a little bit about her. Lucy has a master's degree in social work from McGill University. She is presently working as a consultant for a health network in Montreal, Canada. She has been involved in various research projects and has published numerous articles related to caregiving issues. She has lectured at several universities and colleges on innovative approaches to caregiving and presents annually at international and national conferences. Lucy is also a consultant for private industry in the United States including her work with the WellMed Charitable Foundation and clinics in Texas. She would also like you to know that she was a caregiver for her mother for about 10 years. Lucy, welcome to the session. Thank you so much, Glenda. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our session. You know, one of the biggest challenges that caregivers may face is providing daily personal care for a loved one, especially if... Uh, they suffer from any form of dementia. This can be a daily struggle that could be very frustrating, especially if the person you're caring for refuses your help. So let me share one of the many emails I receive from caregivers about this topic. And um, this lady writes, Dear Lucy, my husband was diagnosed with Alzheimer's five years ago. I'm his primary caregiver and happy to do so. In general, George is a very calm and gentle man. I assist him in all his daily activities. However, in the past few months, he has become very difficult uh, for me to care for George for his hygiene. He's now refusing to bathe, change his clothes, and refuses to brush his teeth. I'm so angry with him that I just want to give up. I don't know what to do or where to get help. I took him to his doctor. Um, who said that the dementia has progressed and I need to find new ways to assist George. I'm in my late 70s and find it very difficult. When I get angry, I feel sorry for yelling at him. Please help. And she signed it, Mary. So before we start, I want to thank Mary for her question. But I'm wondering if anyone in our audience today can relate to how she feels. So well, if you would like to uh, make a comment uh, in answer to what Lucy has covered, please unmute your microphone and I will call on you by your name. Uh, the chat box will remain open during the session and you can enter your questions and comments also in that format and we will answer them there. Anyone felt that, you know, they've just had it when they're in a caregiving situation <laughs> as this, this uh, writer has said? Darlene, you have a comment? Darlene? Well, her microphone is unmuted, but I don't hear anything. That's okay. I think maybe I kind of threw that question um, too early on, but I, I'm sure that a lot of you that are with us today have felt somewhat the way Mary feels. And I do hope, Mary, that today my session will help you a little bit to get those answers. Uh, I see something in the chat. Uh, Maoli says, yes, her mom doesn't like to brush her teeth. That's a common thing that we hear, isn't it, Lucy? Yeah, it is. But before we start, I kind of want to talk just slightly about dementia, just to kind of refresh our minds. So if we can go to the next uh, slide, please. You know, dementia is an overall term for a set of symptoms um, that is caused by uh, disorders affecting the, uh, the brain. Symptoms may include memory loss and difficulties with thinking, problem solving, language, severe enough to reduce a, a person's uh, ability to perform everyday activities. A person with dementia may also experience changes in mood or behavior. These uh, dementia symptoms are, uh, you know, they're incurable, which means that, uh, that any loss of disabilities cannot come back. 
So dementia is not a specific disease. Many diseases can cause dementia, including Alzheimer's disease, vascular dementia, Lewy body disease. You could get uh, dementia from a stroke, some people with Parkinson's and others as well. These conditions have um, similar and overlapping symptoms. There's currently no cure for dementia. However, there are treatments options and lifestyle choices that uh, that slow down, that slow it down a little bit. Research is really adamant in trying to find uh, the cause of all that. Yeah, was there something on the chat? Uh, Darlene said that she agreed with Mary and I reassured her she's not the only one that has that feeling in that situation. Thank you so much for that. All right, so we know that dementia affects the um, problem solving. So it's important to keep that in mind because sometimes you kind of forget because sometimes people have good days and bad days. So let's discuss reasons why some people with dementia display difficult behavior, especially when it comes to daily hygiene. It might be a behavior that has always existed or a new situation as the caregiver can now, is now facing. You know, when a person with dementia is unwilling to do something that we want them to do, this may be described as their refusal, resistant, difficult to manage, they're stubborn. Uh, and that, uh, you know, it can make you angry, it could make you frustrated, and I certainly can understand it. However, as with other areas of a person's behavior that we may find challenging or are distressing, we need to try to find out what the person is telling us through their refusal. In other words, the reasons why they are refusing and rather than experiencing, you know, expecting the person with dementia to follow our wishes, we should be focusing how we can um, cooperate with their wishes. Not an easy thing to do, but it's something that really is important. You have to understand why, why is it happening? So when a person with dementia is verbally or non-verbally communicating that they don't want to do something, we need to discover why. So it might be that the person may be in pain. Uh, they may have an infection or medical condition that you're not even aware of, and they're not able to tell you. The person then possibly does not understand what they are being asked to do. The requests we are making does not fit with the person's standard and preference. For example, we're asking them to eat something they don't like or go to bed when they want to stay up. The person feels that they are that they are being talked to, down talked to, or bossed around and is refusing in order to keep a sense of control. The person is misinterpreting the situation uh, or the environment, for example, the person may perceive a shiny floor as being wet and refuse to walk on it. But, you know, they actually believe that that's what's happening to them. They are tired. They could be hungry. They need to go to the bathroom. So there are really many, many reasons why, uh, why certain people behave a certain way. And I guess the most important thing to do, if you can, is to actually keep a log once or, or, or a journal and just to get a sense of what is actually going on. So a person with dementia may refuse to fit in with a daily routine that does not fit with their own, uh, you know, with their own. This could be seen as a positive sign, believe it or not. It may show that the person is still has a sense of their own identity and autonomy. And it's very beneficial to both the caregiver and their loved one to maintain their autonomy and, di and, and, di and, and, and dignity for as long as possible. You know, people with dementia have good days and they have bad days. It's so important to uh, recognize how the person is feeling that day. If they're having a bad day, maybe it's not a good day to give them a bath or a shower. I always say, pick your battles, focus on quality of life. These things are gonna happen on a daily basis. You know, personal care is so intimate, uh, an activity, and most people will experience difficulty feelings if they need help with hygiene. You know, trying to force a person with dementia to accept personal care sometimes can be seen as abuse. However, neglecting someone's personal care needs can also appear to be abuse. 
So what does a caregiver do and how do you move forward? That's a big loaded question. I do want to say, if you can go to the next slide, please. Thank you. You know, first and foremost, remind yourself that providing care for someone with dementia requires creativity, patience, and empathy. Um, the ability to step outside of your personal needs and logic and understand just why certain behavior is happening and learn um, to, you know, successfully manage it. It could be a hit or miss. It doesn't, you know, there's no magical formula. And with most thing, things related to dementia, caregiving, dealing with behavioral symptoms requires planning, uh, making things very simple and tons and tons of patience. As, a, as the dementia progresses, poor hygiene can become an issue. People living with dementia may refuse to bathe and it could have medical consequences as urinary tract infection. They can get rashes, they can have uh, bed sores and obviously unpleasant odors. But because dementia causes a slow decline of cognitive functioning, the individual will start to get confused about simple things like how to wash their hair. They may be overwhelmed and confused by all the products on, a, on the bathroom counter, perhaps mistaking a tube of toothpaste for, tooth, for, for a tube of lotion. They may not always recognize themselves or their loved ones. The images they see in the mirror may appear to them as strangers. So it's important to realize that their sensory perception, especially vision, touch, and smell, also um, have changed. Uh, that's very important to keep in mind. This can make a tub of water seem scary as deaf perception is changes. A smelly shirt may be more comforting than a freshly laundered one. Room, um, you know, room temperature or water temperature may feel different to them than to your loved one. Um, they may not notice that they have body odor at all. So, you know, I've said an awful lot. And before I go any further, I'm just wondering, are there any questions or any comments that anybody would like to make? Okay, once again, all you have to do is unmute your microphone. I do see one person is on the phone, so you can press star six and that will unmute your telephone. Um, we'd love to have you join us in this conversation or the chat box is open. You can always put comments or questions there. I was wondering once you said that, Lucy, uh, about the brushing the teeth, and it, it, and like I said, it's an issue that we hear about. Uh, maybe someone has an ulcer or some sensitive teeth in their in their mouth, and they can't tell you that. A hundred percent. And we're going to get to all. I'm going to get to every one of these um, tips that we're going to talk about today, uh, about clothes, about bathing, about teeth, etc. Right. You know, a lot of people don't realize that dental hygiene is so important, um, not only for your teeth or your gums, but for your whole body, because infections in the mouth can actually get into the bloodstream. And so it is extremely important, especially with people who cannot tell you what's bothering them. So I appreciate what you just mentioned that, yes, they could have an ulcer in their mouth. They could have a sore and um, which makes them not only have pain, but also not able to, not wanting to brush their teeth. Yeah, sure. I'm just gonna put on the light for a minute because we're expecting a huge storm in Montreal and it's getting awfully dark in my room. I'll be right back. <laughs> Go ahead, Lucy. Those of us in Texas would love to be having a, a storm like that. <laughs> <laughs> We're expecting so much rain, I cannot uh, begin to tell you. Um, um, there's another someone is saying. As a nice. nurse, Diane has said, as a nurse who has cared for individuals with dementia over 38 years, covering mirrors are almost necessary so they do not become frightened by seeing someone looking back at them in the mirror. And I assume she's saying because they do not recognize themselves, as you mentioned a little earlier. Absolutely. And, you know, some people don't, it's very frightening. Can you imagine if you're passing a mirror and you don't even recognize yourself, there's a stranger in the house. Mm -hmm. I mean, that person can actually panic. So that's why it's so important to look at sensory. Sensory, remember, their sense 
is not the same. Their smell, their their vision, their perception, it's all, it could have really changed to a point where they're not even able to distinguish certain things. So we're going to start, as Glenda said, there's going to be a lot, a lot of uh, of slides that I have, and I, I detailed them because I know I'm going to be saying an awful lot, and it's impossible for all of you to remember everything. But keep in mind that my resources also have, you can always get the resources and get on them, and they'll have the tips that I'm giving you as well. I want to start by talking about bathing. So helping someone with dementia uh, disease take a bath or shower can be one of the hardest things to do. Planning can help make bath time better for both of you. If the person is afraid of bathing, follow their lifelong bathing habits, such as um, doing uh, the bath or shower in the morning or before going to bed. I have to say that there's no magic formula because each person is different and you're the one that's going to have to um, look at that. Thank you for putting on um, the slide. So let's look at tips. It's so important, and I'm sure a lot of you don't do this, but just a reminder, never leave a confused or frail person alone in the tub or shower. Always check the water temperature before they get in. Use a handheld shower head, use a rubber mat pad and safety bars in the tub. Use a sturdy shower chair to support a person who is unsteady to prevent falls. Some of these equipment you certainly can buy at a drugstore or medical supply stores. But what I would highly recommend is a professional can come and evaluate your bathroom for your person because there could be each person is different some people would have a harder time lifting their legs there's so there's an occupational therapist or you can um, definitely in the community you can have someone to come in and to do a thorough investigation all right so before bathing next uh, next slide please all right, so get the soap, the washcloth, towels, and shampoo ready, obviously. Make sure the bathroom is warm and well lit. Play soft music if it helps the person relax. I would highly recommend that regardless of who it is because it really, really works, especially if you know the kind of music that um, the person you're caring for enjoys. It's a distraction and it's a redirection. Because while you're listening to the music and if there's words, you can talk around it. Be matter of fact about bathing. Say it's time for a bath now and don't argue about the need for a bath or shower. Please don't tell them that they smell or that they haven't taken a shower for a long time. I certainly know the frustration. I've been there. I've done that. But it's just a reminder. Be gentle and respectful. Tell the person what you are doing going to do step by step. Now again, make sure that the water temperature is comfortable. Don't use bath oil or even uh, bath salts. It can make it up slippery and may cause urinary tract infection. So before we go any further, I just wonder if there's any questions about what I'm saying right now. Well, Diane also says that she works at a medical daycare with individuals with dementia. And she has a woman there who attends five days here, five days a week and hadn't brushed her teeth at home for a couple of weeks. Her husband had tried everything and you can imagine his frustration. Um, and so they asked him to bring a toothbrush and toothpaste and they were successful in brushing his teeth. And she also added that sometimes another caregiver can provide the personal care instead of the loved one. Uh, they also give showers there as a change of helpers and scenarios. And sometimes that definitely works. There's proof. No, absolutely. I mean, um, you know, as I'm going through all of these, uh, if, if you're having trouble with any of these hygiene tasks, it, and if you can um, have somebody help you with that, absolutely. Now, you know, bathing, these are really... Um, Important things to keep in mind for sure, because it's, it's, it's something that we need to do. But what I also wanna talk about, and I will a little bit later on, um, you know, 
you know, during the shower, as I said, is, is keeping them, but after bathing, there's also a whole issue about after bathing. Uh, it's so important to uh, prevent rashes or infections by paying, uh, by patting the person dry with a towel, make sure the person is completely dry, be sure to dry between the folds of the skin. Um, if the person is incontinent, use a protective ointment on their private parts. If the person has trouble getting in and out of the bathtub, uh, do a sponge bath instead, okay? You know, we kind of feel how many times do we have to bathe? <laughs> Most people bathe every single day, right? But, you know, these people are not going to work. They're not exercising a lot. They might be doing a little bit there. So it, the necessity of bathing uh, every day might not be the case for them. And there's nothing wrong with um, other bathing tips. For example, uh, most people, um, you know, if, a full sponge baths are okay. Uh, washing the person's hair in the sink with a hose attachment may be easier than doing it in the shower or the bathroom. Um, or use dry shampoo. Um, non sting sh baby shampoo is also very important. So, the, the other thing is yes, if you can't do it on your own, um, you possibly will need someone to help you. But I also want to go a little bit deeper and it kind of goes off the topic a bit. You know, many caregivers tell me that um, when it's actually time to, um, when is it time to think about other alternatives? If hygiene becomes so difficult at home uh, with basing, with dressing, with brushing teeth, it just is not something that you can do. It's time to really think about that. Yes, you could think about maybe getting someone in to help you, uh, getting in touch with organizations that have support for you. There's no doubt about that. But many caregivers have said to me, when I no longer can take care of them, their personal need, that's when I have to look at alternative. And there's nothing wrong with doing that. Okay, And you might need the support from a professional social worker or home help or a nurse to kind of go through that and to see what are my next steps? Where am I going with all that? So are there any questions or any, um, any other tips that you would like to share? So Margaret tells us that her mom is in a memory care and is cooperative with showers. So there's one thing she doesn't have to worry about. But the, and the staff helps her twice a week, but she forgets she has already showered. And when Margaret shows up, she wants her to help her with her shower. And she says sometimes she has a hard time talking her out of it. So the opposite issue is, is present here. Um, okay. But when it comes to brushing her teeth, it's the opposite. She refuses to do it. And sometimes the staff um, has to brush her teeth for her because she refuses to do it herself. Pretty common on the tooth brushing, but I haven't heard the other one before. <laughs> well, I have to say that um, that's a great, thank you for sharing that. Um, Cause the fact that your mom wants you to bathe her and she forgets that she just had a bath. Here's a perfect tip. This is where you distract and redirect. So what do I mean by that? So she's talking about wanting to take a shower instead of you constantly, you know, telling her you just took a shower, mom, you just took a bath just do something different and say, listen to her and then say, you know what? Would you like to go for a little walk around? How about if we go and have a cup of coffee or tea? Let's go and look out the window. You know, these are things that, um, these are redirect, distract and redirect, all right? So I don't know, try it. And it really, really does work. I did that with my mom. So I, I'm not only dealing with uh, professionally, but dealing with experience. So see what happens there. Any other thoughts on that? Everybody is still muted. Okay, thank you for that. I'm gonna try and close my phone, okay. All right, so we did bathing. Let's go to the next topic, please. The next slide is dressing. Good. 
So people with Alzheimer's disease often need more time to dress. It can be hard for them to choose their clothes. They might wear the wrong clothes for the session. They also might wear colors that don't go together or forget to put on a piece of clothing. Allow the person to dress on their own for as long as possible. Um, you know, really, does it really matter if the clothes don't match? Does it really matter unless you're going out or you're expecting company? Let them just be, uh, you know, let them be uh, free and easy. If they want to wear unmatching clothes, it's perfectly fine. Or if they're putting on a sweater that is 90 degrees outside, maybe they're cold. So just let them be. So um, what's important is to lay out the clothes in order it should be put on. Because really what you're trying to do is maintain their independence as long as possible. So what I wanna tell you caregivers is don't do things if you don't have the time to do it the right way. It doesn't always work out. But remember that you need to take the time with some people um, to get them dressed that day. So lay out the clothing in order it should be put on like their underwear first um, or their socks. And it's also good to remove extra clothing from the closet. Seeing a lot of clothes can be very, very confusing. If the person insists on wearing the same clothes every day, try to launder, obviously, the clothes or get duplicates. I know that my mom left a certain uh, top. I don't know why, but I really went out and bought a couple of the same tops in different colors and a kind of help. You know, choose clothing that's easy to wear and care for. Zippers and Velcro are easier than button shirts and pants with elastic bands are easier to put on. Label or use pictures to describe the contents of, of dress drawers. You know, if they're the ones, if you want them to maintain their independence so that they can actually see that there's shirts over here with a picture and pants over there. And, you know, it could be helpful to group items of the same color or ones that are worn together. And hanging ties, belts, or other accessories on a hanger with matching clothes and always have a handy basket to put soil uh, laundry to, separ uh, to separate with clean ones. Now I see there was another something on the chat. Um, there was someone asking if they, Kimberly wanted to know if we, they were gonna receive the uh, slides. And I explained, I, yeah, that they'll be shared, yeah. Absolutely, that's why I'm going through all of them so that you can have it. Um, you know, loose fitting, uh, comfortable clothes such as, uh, sports bras, cotton socks, underwear, and sweatpants and shorts with elastic waistbands. I have to share a personal thing with my mom. She, you know, she was just so much more comfortable not wearing a bra. And um, it was okay when she was at home and if we wanted to go out or people were coming, sports bras were really very helpful. But I have to tell you that I never forced her to put one on if she was uncomfortable. Um, and I just felt that that was, you know, it was her, it was up to her to decide whether she wanted to or not. Definitely avoid girdles, control top pantyhose, knee high um, nylons, you know, they're not great. High heels, of course, and tight socks. Okay, so anything loose. And as I said, use Velcro tape or large zipper pulls for clothing instead of uh, shoelaces, buttons or or uh, buckles. You know, if you go on the internet, you can really find um, uh, places where they, they cust not custom made, but they, they have clothes that, you know, if you have a zipper, they have a little pull up, things that are very, very comfortable and able to manage. Um, and again, ov obviously, when it comes to, to shoes, uh, slip on shoes that don't, that won't slide, or shoes with Velcro straps are really important. Um, the other thing I also want to talk about is that um, in the house, many times people wear slippers. Just be careful uh, about slipping and things like that or rugs that are just little rugs that are all over the place. Um, there are socks now with, um, with sort of... Uh, at the bottom there is there they have either little little uh, buttons or velcro or whatever it is that sort of stops you from uh, from slipping okay are there any questions about dressing
or any thoughts that you have. Yeah, or Diane, had a, Diane had another tip because you had mentioned the laundry basket and she said, keep the clothes hamper out of their sight so they will not put on the same clothes again. Really good, good tip. Absolutely. That's another tip I'll have to add. Thank you for that. <laughs> Okay, so um, as we progress, we're going to move on. Let's look at oral care. We're finally getting there. <laughs> All right, so proper oral care is important to prevent tooth decay, gum disease, poor dental health, will also affect an individual ability to, uh, and willingness to eat. As Glenda said, if they have a sore and you don't know it, they're stopping to eat and you can understand why. It's wise to have a complete dental examination early in the disease, okay? Get connected with a good dentist. Ask the dentist to schedule appointment at times when there is uh, no delay in the office, you know, either early or late. And I have to tell you, there are some dentists that uh, specialize in people with different dementia issues. And, but always tell the staff ahead of time um, that, your, that your loved one does have uh, a bit of issues. You can share as much as you want or as little, so they won't be surprised of uh, what's their reaction when they come. Again, never force anybody, but I think it is very important to have uh, dental care every, every uh, year for sure. All right, um, is there another question? Yes, um, Kara uh, says one of her clients refuses to bathe or change clothes as she feels he's already just done it. Uh, when people are putting their health at risk and family can't afford placement, what do you do? Good question. It's, a, it's an amazing question and it happens a lot. Um, again, as I said, there's no uh, magic formula for that. The only thing I could say is I hope that when the person goes to sleep, they do take their clothes off. Um, and obviously that might be an opportunity to wash their clothes at night rather than do a laundry during the day so that the clothes are clean. Um, distracting them sometimes may and may not work. The other thing is um, I'd have to have a much better understanding of how their behavior is in general. Do they get upset, upset? Do they become angry? Is it something that you, you know, so it's really hard. I would definitely uh, recommend an assessment of this individual. It might be time to, to really understand what's going on, going to a doctor's appointment as well. I don't know, Glenda, if you have any other thoughts that you would like to share, I would appreciate. Oh, um, Kara adds enraged and history of conflict personality disorder. So it sounds like it's a, a dual diagnosis situation. And so they're not um, dealing or behaving perhaps as many people with dementia might. It seems like exactly. it's enhanced. Yeah. yeah. It definitely needs to be evaluated. I don't know when the person was last seen by a doctor but I would highly recommend, I think their medication should be reviewed as well. Yeah. Something might be going on with their medications. They might need to be increased, decreased, oh, uh, whatever it is that uh, needs to be done. Oh, Tara says that she refuses to be hospitalized and the doctors don't help. I think I'd be looking for another doctor, um, number one. Um, it's just a difficult situation, but I have to agree with you, Lucy. Medications have to be looked at and... Um, and I don't believe in medicating people unreasonably that, that maybe a medication addition might help in this particular case. Absolutely. But thank you. And I, I hope that you get the help that you need. All right. So we're going back to, um, we're so going now, back. Resistant to leaving the house. And thank you for your input. Um, <laughs> that's just terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm laughing, but I'm just thinking how horrible and how frustrating um, I'm wondering if in the area where you are, Cara, if they have um, doctors in home visits. I mean, seeing more of this has been publicized um, here in Texas. So that might be an option to look at too, uh, is to see if you can get a doctor to come to the home. If it's available in your area, it may not be available everywhere. Thank you, Glenda. 
Well, that shows us, I mean, you know, you can listen to all kinds of help and, and um, but every situation is so different. But I do think that you need to, to, you know, to try and see about the medications play a big role. All right, so are we back to oral care or are there any other questions about bathing? No? Okay. All right, so back to that. So try fluoride swaps if the um, toothpaste is uh, refused. You can also try regular fluoride treatments at home by using fluoride trays, if you can get a hold of them. It's important to remove partial dentures before cleaning natural teeth. Be prepared for the person to hide their dentures. Does that happen? That used to happen all the time with my mom. Try to keep them in a specific place at all times. Remove dentures at bedtime and clean with a firm brush. Place them in water overnight. Make sure dentures are clearly labeled. To prevent damage when cleaning dentures, make sure the sink is filled or the drain is closed and the toilet lid is shut so that nobody kind of throws them in. If the person develops dry mouth, try sugarless candies, gum, ice chips to increase the flow of saliva. Um, you know, I think it's important to remind, um, to remind the person to brush twice a day with a soft brush, toothbrush, and fluoride toothpaste. A uh, soft brush is very important so they don't hurt themselves. Um, consider getting the person an electric toothbrush if possible. It may be easier for them to use, especially if they have problems with the arthritis. Obviously, try it out first because they, uh, the, tooth, the electric tooth might frighten them. So that's something to keep in mind. It's also important to give step-by-step -step instructions or try hands-on guidance or gestures. What I want to tell you is that you can do brush the teeth at the same time as, uh, as they do. Take your toothbrush and show them and brush them, uh, brush the teeth together. Um, be present when the person is brushing to make sure that they do not swallow toothpaste, fluoride, or mouthwash. That's hard to do at times, uh, for sure. Um, and so what I want to tell you is that there's another way of doing it as well, which was very helpful. And it was, um, it was really um, uh, one of the caregivers that suggested that to, to me. So what she did was um, her, the person she was caring for, her mom, really was not able to follow instructions. So what she did is that she sat her down at the table. She sat on the chair. There was a, a, a basin with a glass of water. She would stand behind her and she would tell mom, I'm going to brush your teeth. She would hold the toothbrush. She would actually brush the teeth for her mom and then give her a glass of water to schwas and uh, spill into the basin. That seemed to, um, to work for her. And so it's another way of doing it. It's a, it takes a little bit more time. Um, you know, for example, here's another suggestion by a caregiver. It's time to brush your teeth. Hand the toothbrush to the person. Again, demonstrate. It can sometimes promote the individual to begin the task themselves. So that means you don't necessarily need to brush your teeth with them, but you're kind of starting to get them going. So are there any questions or any other suggestions or tips that you have done that you would like to share with the, uh, with the other uh, participants today? Well, I liked what Cara said because she has a sense of humor in the midst of all this because she, <laughs> we were talking about the doctor visiting at home and she said, preferably a handsome male. So I, <laughs> I told her that might be the best solution with a wink, a little smiley face there. So we do, it's, it's important to keep your humor, you know, amongst all these terrible things. It really is important to keep your humor. I have to say, you know, I'm sharing another personal little thing about my mom. Um, she uh, she really liked her doctor a lot. I was very, very lucky, but she never hesitated to tell him how handsome he was <laughs> <laughs> at all times, you know, and uh, that was always gave me a little chuckle and gave him. And so humor was so important um, in everyday activity. Laughing is so important. Let's go to um, to foot care, please. Okay, so maybe some of you think, oh, what's the big deal about foot care? You know, as people age, foot care is often neglected. 
because people can no longer reach their feet comfortably. Does anybody feel that way? I have to say at times when I have to put my big winter boots on, um, that sort of comes to play. And they often don't uh, see to provide proper nail care. This task can be more of a challenge if the person has dementia. Um, it's important to check the person's feet on a regular basis, look for discoloration. You know, discoloration can tell us that there is uh, circulation problems. Even discoloration in your nails, believe it or not, can tell us if they're blue, that something is going on. Uh, calluses, bunions, nail problems that can cause foot pain, and you don't even know about it. They can't tell you. So if you see anything, or if they say, ouch, when you're touching their feet, uh, report it to the doctor, obviously. Check nail length, be careful with nail clippers and scissors. If you're uncomfortable trimming nails, arrange to have this done at a foot clinic or a professional, if you can, to come to the house. Again, try not to clip them too closely. Be very, very careful. You know, after bathing, make sure skin between the toes is clean and dry. While checking the person's feet, take the opportunity to provide a comfort by giving a little foot massage with lotion. Um, you know, that's a really nice little activity to do together while you're doing that. You can talk about reminisce and talk about other things. A little nail polish often brings a smile. And Glenda knows this. I often share that. Um, and it could be for a man who doesn't have to be colored. It could be just a clear little polish or, or not. Um, one of the nicest activities that I shared with my mom was when I used to do her nails. I used to bring a couple of different colors. I never cut her nails on her hands. I always used to use the file. And she used to choose the color and we talked about things, whatever she wanted to. I always had a little bit of music on. And I have to say that I felt as if I wasn't only doing caregiving tasks. It was a really pleasant activity to do with my mother. I think I saw something on the chat. Well, Diane has given us all kinds of good information today and I certainly appreciate it. But she said, always have a podiatrist cut the toenails of a diabetic. And that is such good advice. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's the other thing that I wanted to also mention. If somebody is diabetic, do not cut their nails. But thank you for that. Um, no, not at all. So, and really the podiatrist is someone good that can also tell you a lot of other things about what's going on uh, with the feet. If there is a, a bunion problem or, uh, you know, nails that are too long or calluses. All right. So I thank you. And we can, I'm just looking at the time to give us sufficient time. Let's go. I'm going to focus a little bit on hair care. If that's okay with you. We can go to the next slide. You know, that well-groomed hair will make a person with dementia look and feel better. So choose a hairstyle that's easy to care for, but please choose something that you think that they would like as well. I know cutting the hair very, very short is so much easier, but remember we're trying to keep the dick uh, dignity and giving people as much choice as possible. So if they really hate their hair, think about not cutting it that way next time. Encourage the person to comb their own hair if needed. You know, give step-by-step -step instructions, place the comb in the person's hand or start combing uh, your own hair. Again, use non-stinging baby shampoo. That's also important when we're talking about showers. A dry shampoo, if washing hair is difficult, it works. I have to tell you, it really does. Try a scalp massage when washing, it may be soothing. That's another really nice little thing that you can do together. And while you're doing that, you can start talking about different things and just connect. Uh, a salon or barbershop can be a familiar and a relaxed setting, made the style so aware that the person has dementia. If the person feels insecure, obviously you may want to stay with them to try to find a stylist or that can come home. Um, here's another tip that one of the caregivers said, my mom really likes fruit. I found that having a bowl of fresh fruit uh, nearby during bath time helped focus her attention on something she enjoyed as I would uh, shampoo her hair if she began to feel agitated, I would give her a fresh strawberry to eat. This made shampooing easier and more positive experience for both of us. Look how creative that is, huh? 
So music or food, distracting and redirecting. So you really need to know the person that you're taking care of and use all these little tips to really get you through um, a difficult, uh, a difficult uh, chore that has to be done. So are there any tips or any questions about hair care in particular? All right. So let's go to the next slide, please. So let's look at special tips for women. Now, some of you are gonna say, what do they need makeup for? But remember, we're trying to keep their independence um, as, as long as possible. So applying makeup may be a regular and important part of their grooming routine. Just keep that in mind. I know my mom loved to put lipstick on. Uh, try, you know, to simplify and allow the person to do as much as possible. Obviously, you don't want them, God forbid, to look like a clown or anything like that, especially the eyebrows. Those are important. They can't be too dark. But you, you know that individual. If they like to put a little bit of rouge on, then why not? Uh, but ask them first. They might not want to any longer. Um, some people really like treatment, beauty treatment, such as facial, give particular pleasure. These are things you need to keep in mind if you can or can afford them. Lots of things that you can do uh, at home. Again, a manicure can help overall groom and be a source of pleasant touching and stimulation and can often be given by a friend or family member. Uh, if you're caring for your pair, for your mother and you know, your, your uh, grandchild wants to do something together. This is a great activity, as I said, that I used to do with my mom. You know, give up on stockings and pantyhose. I'm saying that again, use warm socks to provide warmth and modesty if pants are not welcome. Another thing that's really good is no matter what you're doing, you know, keep sweaters, cardigans, or shawls handy as they can bring comfort and security. So it's really, it's, it's again, taking the time and the patience and making a routine. You don't have to do everything in one day. Spread it out. Spread it out through the week. Spread it out through two weeks, you know, um, as long as it's that you have the time and the patience to actually do it properly so that you don't get agitated and that they don't get agitated as well. Can we go to the next slide, please? Tips for men. So let's look at that. An electric razor could be really a help to you, again, if they're not afraid of it. Um, and if they feel comfortable, and if you feel comfortable with that, uh, consider a time of the day, that's important. It may be best to shave at regular times or a time when the person seems most willing, which may vary from day to day. So don't force it on them. If they have a stubble, it's very in today. I see a lot of people, a lot of men with stubbles. Uh, it's okay. I try going to the barber shop if you really can't do it or find one who will come to the home if possible. And then let the beard grow if shaving becomes difficult. I know it's, you know, you could always, a beard can always be easily trimmed. So I'm just wondering if anybody has a question or any other tip that you would like to share. So once again, you can just unmute your microphone and uh, we'd love to have you join in the conversation. We've had a lot of activity on the chat box and that works as well. <laughs> All right, we're getting to the top of the hour. So I'm going to go quickly. Finally, notes on hygiene. Establish, you know, it's important to establish a daily routine around hygiene, keeping it simple and as pleasant as possible. You'll have a better chance of getting through it with humor, you know, and dignity. Um, try to see things through, um, you know, your loved one's lens, which means don't expect your reasoning to matter. Just take a big breath and try again later. If it never seems to work out, you might want to consider a home care aid or somebody to come and help you with that. And here is one that I don't want you to forget to pour yourself a nice bubble bath and soak some of that caregiving mm -hmm. stress away as well, okay? I always tell caregivers that they need to tear, care for themselves as well. It's important to be good to yourself. We all need balance in our lives, reduce your stress, exercise, take deep breaths, stay, you know, stay connected to others, share. I know what you're going through, I have to tell you, I've been there. 
If things get difficult, make an appointment with your loved one's doctor as well. There are many resources in your community that can help you. You don't have to do this alone, okay? There is help. But I do want to emphasize on one thing. Please get Keep in mind, if the person you are caring for becomes verbally or physically abusive when you're trying to do any of this task, um, you have to stop. Don't challenge them, okay? Don't get angry with them, just stop. Put a plan in place that maybe you can call somebody that um, will come and support you, a friend, a family member. You know, the individually real, the individual person really needs to be assessed, especially if it's something new, uh, to have a better understanding of what's going on with them. As I said before, it could be medication. It could be something medical that you're not even aware of. So a lot of patience and a lot of caring. And I want to thank all of you, all the caregivers out there. You know, we can give you all the tips in the world. <laughs> And it does help, it does help. So here are the resources. I've used a lot more than that, but these are good ones that you can actually very easily get on the internet. Um, it's very simple language. They will give you a lot, a lot of tips and even more information to go by. So we have a few minutes left and I was just wondering if anybody would like to share anything or make any comments and um, we'll go from there. Well, Margaret had a good one that we didn't touch on for women. Maybe you can add to your women's slide. And she said there are little gadgets, little devices that are meant to shave chin hairs. And, and as an aging woman myself, like I said, that is so important <laughs> that we need to pay attention to that for the person we're caring for. Uh, absolutely. Yes, for sure. Little tweezers, a little something. Absolutely. <laughs> my, my best friend has told me, when it's her time uh, to leave us to be sure to pluck those chin hairs, you know, she doesn't want anybody seeing them. And so I have, when she, when Margaret put that in there, I had a little giggle to myself thinking about yeah. that. Yeah. And there's even these little, um, you know, nose for the hair, for the nose to remove the hair and for, for years that have too many. Again, you know, it goes back to our expectations, how we view that individual, how we want to see them. But a lot of it depends on how they feel about that. So sometimes you just got to let things go and just let nature take its course. So uh, while you're thinking about a question or a comment that you might have, let me tell you what's coming up on the Caregiver Teleconnection. Um, on Tuesday, October the 18th at 10 o'clock, we have a Spanish language session, and it's talking about the basics of Medicare, because this is open enrollment. For those of you that are caring for an older adult, it is Medicare open enrollment time in our country, and so we need to be aware of that. Um, so if you know someone that is primarily Spanish speaking, please tell them about that session. That's Tuesday, October the 18th at 10 o'clock Central Time. And then let's see, I've got to compare calendars here. Oh, on Wednesday, October the 19th, again at 10 o'clock Central Time, this is the third in the series of Aging in the 21st Century, What Caregivers Need to Know. And that's with Dr. Elliot Montgomery Scar and Lucy will be there. And um, they are going to be talking about what the caregivers and seniors need to look for in long-term care facilities. So if it is time for that placement, they are gonna help you know what to look for. And one more that I'll tell you about, I'll be back with you on Thursday, October the 20th at 11 o'clock Central Time, talking with Dr. Heather Veter. And this is about hospice question and answer. So, you know, that's another thing, end of life care. We don't want to just stick our heads in the sand. Um, okay, has anyone thought of a question or a comment? We have a few minutes if you'd like to discuss your particular situation. Uh, get into details. Well, I don't see any mics that are open and there's nothing in, oh, let's see. Yeah, here we go, Scott. The person's past routine can also be very important. If they were used to showering in the morning and now the caregiver is attempting to help them shower at night, it may not work. No. Yes, I, I quite, I, that's great. Thank you for reminding us again. Yes, I did point out to that. Again, it's, it's always easier to have a schedule that fits you. It's true. 
But I think it's still important to keep in mind that if someone was used to having a shower at a certain time, it's not convenient. We just have to go along with that just to make life easier. Yes, absolutely. Whatever can make life easier. Absolutely. But, but also knowing you've got to take care of yourself and let go yes. when you need to let go. Yes, uh, for sure. Yeah, for sure. I do want to also talk very quickly, you know, some people used to wear perfume or aftershave as well. And um, they might want to continue doing that. Uh, but they may not, even though you want them to smell good. <laughs> if they're yeah. refusing for you to put on the, um, the aftershave or the perfume, then don't stop it. Uh, it might be offensive to them now, or they are, it's too strong and they can't tolerate it. Yeah. Anyone else have a question or a comment before we close today? Well, Lucy, I want to tell you how much I appreciate the information that you share and you're right. It was a lot of information. Um, as I said in the chat box, um, we will be sending out the PowerPoint slides along with the follow-up questionnaire email. If you register for the call, you will automatically get it. Uh, if you did not, you can call our customer server service and request a copy of it. Um, it also will be posted in its entirety as a podcast on the Caregiver Teleconnection website. If you feel you missed something, want to hear what Lucy said about a certain thing, you can always go back and watch it again. Well, Lucy, okay, I guess closing comment. I just wanted to say to everybody, please take care of yourself. Do something special for yourself every single day. It kind of makes you feel good. It's not an easy job. I always say caregiving is extremely rewarding. I was happy to care for my mom, but that doesn't mean that it wasn't frustrating at times yeah. um, and just overwhelming to say the least. Um, yeah. But we have to find the happy times, uh, the times where you can connect. So take good care of yourselves. Oh, oh thank absolutely. you. Thank you, Barbara. That's very nice. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. All right, us. everyone. Take good yeah, care. Don't forget to get your flu shot. It's flu season coming up. So get your <laughs> flu shot. That's been my admonition all week. Uh, thank you for right. joining us. And we hope to see you real soon on another Caregiver Teleconnection session. Bye-bye. Take care, everybody. Bye.